Good day everyone and welcome to this episode. My name is Marie and today I'm excited to give you an introduction to the theory of new materialism. New materialism is not a closed theory, but rather an interdisciplinary and diverse movement that explores the relationships between humans, technology, the environment and nature. Coined in the 1990s, the term and movement emerged as a response to the ecological crisis and rapid technological changes of that time. As mentioned, the movement is diverse. However, there are some common aspects that can be identified. So let's take a closer look at some of the key aspects that are shared by the different approaches of new materialism. First, the position of the human subject in new materialism. One of the ideas of new materialism is to question the central position attributed to the human subject, which has been a prominent feature in humanism. This anthropocentric view of the world revolves around human beings. All actions and processes are evaluated according to their impact on humanity, making human beings the primary agents of action. New materialist perspectives challenge this anthropocentrism through a posthumanist critic. On one hand, they question the exclusionary nature of the human category. There is also a critical questioning of what can be understood by the category of human being. Feminist and postcolonial critics, such as Pia Gaske, have shown that the concept of human is often a generalization based on specific human experiences, primarily those of white males. On the other hand, new materialist approaches emphasize understanding the interconnectedness of human cultures with various other material cultures in the world, encompassing both living and non-living actors, such as electrons, bacteria, plants and more. Karen Barrett, an influential theorist of new materialism and the originator of the concept agental realism, takes this critique further by advocating for the complete abolition of the human category. She challenges the traditional separation of subject and object entrenched in the rationalist tradition as well as the associated categorizations of activity and passivity. According to Barrett, agency cannot be ascribed as a fixed attribute to pre-existing subjects or objects. This view challenges the notion that human bodies are fundamentally distinct from non-human bodies, instead considering them as material discursive phenomena constantly evolving through ongoing processes. Building on this premise, Barrett argues for the obsolescence of hierarchical prioritization centered on humans. Donna Haraway stands out as one of the prominent new materialist critics of the Anthropocene notion. Haraway contends that it is not humanity per se, but rather the capitalist system that is accountable for the processes leading to the ecological crisis. New materialist thinker Timothy James Lecane adds that the Anthropocene concept exaggerates human capabilities and positioning within the world. The term age of humans, often used colloquially to refer to the Anthropocene, perpetuates the conceptual divide between human culture and a predominantly passive natural world, neglecting the fact that humans are an integral part of the material world and its complex dynamics. This leads us to the second aspect, the concept of matter. Karen Barrett observes that language has been granted too much power and criticizes the apparent insignificance attributed to matter. She says, the only thing that does not seem to matter is matter. The various approaches of new materialism challenge the widespread assumption that matter is a passive substance waiting for human manipulation proposing a concept of matter that attributes self-organizing potential to it. Karen Barrett conceptualizes matter as an evolving process brought about by interactions. Matter and materiality are thus understood as dynamic, interactive becoming. 
Intraaction is a neologism coined by Karen Barrett to distinguish it from the term interaction, which focuses on interacting actors, for example in Bruno Latour's actor network theory or Donna Haraway's concept of situated knowledge, and presupposes the existence of independent entities. In this differentiation, intraaction represents a profound conceptual shift. Interactions do not necessarily require human presence. They can occur without human involvement. Phenomena materialized through dynamic interactions involve discourses and meaning-generating activities, technical apparatus, subjects and material components. Karen Barrett emphasizes the importance of considering how matter materializes and not understand it as a product of discursive practices, leaving matter as a passive surface for inscription, outcomes and attributions of meaning. In new materialist theories, matter possesses agency. We can also say capacity for action. However, this agency is not directed by human intentionality or subjectivity, but follows its own logic. This shift aims to dissolve the dualism between human and non-human and the associated hierarchy. The concept of thing power from Jane Bennett, in which she ascribes active, vital, positive power and agency to non-humans, can be understood in this logic. Bennett uses the concept of assemblage, influenced by Gilles Deleuze and Félix Guattari, to define ad hoc groupings of diverse elements made of vibrant materials. These assemblages are dynamic and distributed, embodying a tendency for action. Bennett suggests that the concept of assemblage more accurately captures the dynamic nature of agency than stable entities using the term agency of assemblage. I go on with the third aspect, the ontology. Feminist epistemological debates critically engage with the research methodologies of natural sciences and the resulting concept of objectivity. Post-structuralist approaches, such as those of Judith Butler, have significantly influenced these feminist discussions and have led to a critique of the notion of objectivity since the 1990s, with a focus on epistemological rather than ontological questions. New materialism, which can also be understood as part of feminist thought, tries to challenge this by recentering around the intrinsic logic of the material. The central position of the inseparability of being, the ontology, and knowing, the epistemology, underpinning this thinking, is expanded into a new ontology, which claims to offer an alternative understanding of power and responsibility. This new ontology, sometimes referred to as flat ontology, a term that is coined by Delanda and then by Donna Haraway, emphasizes the interconnectedness or interaction of nature and culture, contrary to structuralist approaches that often conceptualize them as fundamental oppositions. Haraway proposes the term nature cultures to dissolve the binary oppositions between the two constructs and acknowledge their interrelation. Additionally, this neo-materialist understanding of ontology primarily focuses on the processes of materialization, which Diane Cole also refers to as an ontology of becoming. Now let's explore some of the prominent thinkers who have significantly contributed to the new materialist discourse. First, Donna Haraway. A historian of natural sciences and a gender scholar, Haraway is renowned for her work on socialist feminism, science, primates and cyborgs. Her influential Cyborg Manifesto, published in 1985, and other writings have left a lasting impact on the movement. Second, Rosi Braidotti. A philosopher and gender studies scholar, Bredotti works on posthumanism and has developed the concept of nomadic subjectivity, drawing inspiration from Gilles Deleuze and Félix Guattari's idea of the nomad as a subversive figure. Third, Karen Barrett. 
A feminist theorist, Barrett's concept of agential realism challenges the traditional separation between ontology and epistemology, introducing the idea of interaction, which has been highly influential in new materialism. Fourth, Jane Bennett. A political philosopher, Bennett has made significant contributions to the new materialist discourse through her work on political ecology and the concept of vibrant matter. Despite its strength, New materialism has not escaped criticism. Some scholars have raised concerns about certain aspects of the movement. Deuber Mankowski, for example, points out the need for an epistemological perspective that takes historical situatedness into account. Furthermore, critics have also highlighted the silence with the new materialist works regarding the specific definition of the category human. Additionally, some question new materialism's ability to provide an emancipatory social theory that adequately addresses issue of power, gender and race. In conclusion, new materialism stands as an evolving movement seeking to comprehend the connections between humans and the material world. Thank you for joining me on this exploration of new materialism. I hope you found it enlightening and thought-provoking. If you have any questions or thoughts, please feel free to share them with me.